Jessica from the Houston Zoo Bird Department and today we're here behind the scenes and tomorrow is Migratory Bird Day, International Migratory Bird Day, so we're back here to look at some birds. And this area is off exhibit, behind the scenes, no one gets to see it, so today's lucky day. <laughs> um, if you notice, some of our cages are uh, a little smaller and different looking than most of our enclosures. Um, that's because we want these birds to feel real comfortable so we can plant them however we want to, give them different enrichment. Um, and our main purpose for this building is for breeding, but we also have it for holding space. Um, right now we've got some birds in here that we're holding for the up and coming Pontanol exhibit. Um, so we can go inside and take a look. So these birds that we're looking at right now are green oropindolas and they're from South America and they are going to be going into our Pontanal walkthrough aviary. Um, they're really exciting, really energetic and kind of get a look in the exhibit. <laughs> There's a couple nests up in the top there that they've been working on for a little while and they make really droopy pendulum nests. Um, so, oh, there she goes. <laughs> breeding them this year. We've had more chicks hatch out. They're very inquisitive. They're also from South America. What kind of birds are these, Jessica? These are gray winged trumpeters, South American birds. Um, there are uh, seven in here right now. We've uh, had four hatch out this year. They parent raised um, the oldest child that we hatched out a couple years ago, actually helped raise the kids. It was really neat seeing him do his job. They're very social, so we can probably get a few more out of them, but <laughs> you can see they're also very boisterous. They're very loud and they can uh, chase each other around. We, they get the zoomies every so often where they run around. Like <laughs> It's really fun to watch them. And will these be in the Pontanol? No, these will not be in the Pontanol. And we heard a bird calling a lot yes. earlier. Um, those are white-crested turaco, or turaco, however you would like to call it. <laughs> this guy here and his female. Um, the wing, what he was doing with his wings is a threat display. Um, so he's protecting her. Um, turacos are all from Africa. And um, they, um, if you saw the red in their wings, that's uh, true to most turcos. They have that red and it's a true red, which means if you take that feather and soak it in water, the pigment will run out of it. About how much do these birds weigh that we're seeing? Um, geez. <laughs> They're probably, um, maybe... Oh, that's the worst question I can ever remember. <laughs> how much. I would say they're probably less than a pound, pound or less. Uh, so I'm getting questions from Tiger. Um, there are, in this building alone, we have 20, 24 species and uh, 67 birds. And all the species are from all over the world. We've got African, South American, Asian, uh, Natalie wants to know what they eat. Um, Turcos mostly eat fruit. Um, so we have a mixture for them that has a soft pellet, some greens and a bunch of fruit like grapes and apples and papaya and sweet potato. Um, 
Some of our other birds um, that we'll see later do eat meat, so we have a little meat for them. Or we, they get lots of bugs, like mealworms and crickets. So these birds are our bluebill curacaos. Um, they have a male and female. The female is the one up high. She's got the black back with the brownish pants. And the male is the black with the white pants, or under feathers. <laughs> um, they're one of our main conservation projects here at the Houston Zoo. They're from Columbia and they are uh, critically endangered. So we have, do a lot of work with the Columbia zoos to keep uh, with uh, cameras, trail cameras, um, so we can see where they are and where they're moving and try and get the population back up. Brianna is asking if it's hard to keep care for birds. Um, it really depends on the birds. Um, our main basis of caring for them is feeding them and cleaning them and giving them water. Um, we do make sure that they're healthy. We um, monitor their health. We have a clinic staff that will help us if they get injured or sick. Um, but it's if you have them at home, um, the main <laughs> the main concern is uh, getting the right food and making sure that they're comfortable. Um, but once you get it down, it's pretty easy to do. But <laughs> like, so, like some of them are just a little bit more particular about certain things. Ace asked uh, why their hair is white. Um, I assume it's the for the white crested turricos. Um, their feathers are white. Um, I really don't know the answer to that question, but we have a bunch of turricos have multiple colors there's greens and blues and whites and then the red and then they also have um we have gray turricos and dark blue turricos um i don't really know why they're white particularly <laughs> um, patrick asked why the curacaos are endangered um mostly it's because of man they've torn down a bunch of the forest that they live in um, and use that for other uses. So there's just really not a place for them to live and there's nowhere for them to live. They can't really breed. There's nothing for them to eat. So it takes a big toll on them when they get their forest taken away from them. Yeah, the, um, the bluebill curacaos are critically endangered. Um, so um, a lot of the birds that you'll see here are either um, are endangered or threatened. We actually have some um, birds down here that in a, we'll see in a couple seconds that are um, extinct in the wild. So we've got they're one of our other conservation programs. Um, what we're looking at now are flesh crested jays. They're South American. Um, they're related to the blue jays that we have here, or the scrub jays or cellar jays. Um, they're corvids, so they are very smart, very into what we're doing right now. Um, she just flew off her nest. She had she laid a few eggs, so we're just waiting for that to finish out. Um, but I threw him some bugs, so he's down getting the bugs off the ground. And there she is. <laughs> and you can see we've got some. Um, enrichment in here for them. We have a swing and a bell and that's um, really something that we don't put on exhibit. We want more natural exhibit um, enrichment. So back here we're allowed to give them a little bit more uh, creative enrichment. Um, Anna asked if they mate for life. Um, Jays I believe do mate for life. Um, since they are so smart, <laughs> imagine that they do it mate for life. Um, ours have, these pairs have been together for a very long time. Um, they 
they really like each other. <laughs> Which bird is loudest, Lucas asked. Um, in my section here, um, it's probably our green jungle fowl. And it's not just loud, but it's this really, really weird <laughs> call. Uh, of course, I can't get him to do it on command, so he'll just have to take my word for it. <laughs> Um, Julie wants to know what are their predators. Um, bigger birds like uh, bird of prey are probably their main predator because uh, they're so smart they can get away from a lot of stuff. A bird of prey can follow them, get closer to them, and follow their like if they're flying, they can follow them. Um, so it's probably their main threat. Of course, um, man's always a threat, but <laughs> I would say bird of prey probably their main threat. Guam kingfishers. Um, we're looking at the male right now. The male's got that chestnut color and the female has more of a white um, belly. And these are the guys that are extinct in the wild. Um, in Guam they had a terrible outbreak of the um, brown tree snake that was introduced to the island during World War II and it pretty much wiped out every bird on that island. So um, there's a few non-native species that are still on the island, but pretty much every native species in, species in Guam was taken off the island. Um, so we have, there's a big conservation project with these guys um, where we um, breed them and uh, we try and keep them in the zoos. There is a program in Guam that also breeds them with, I believe, the intent to release them eventually, but they're still, the snake is still on the island, so they're having a hard time wanting to release them because they can't, unless, the, until the snake is gone, um, can't release any birds back onto the island. Emily asked how long is their lifespan? The kingfisher's lifespans are probably a good 10 years, I would think. Um, they're also mostly more of a terrestrial kingfisher, not like the kingfishers we have here that dive for fish. They usually just will get bugs and lizards and small rodents, um, as opposed to diving in the water to get the fish. the green jungle fowl. He's the one that I think is probably the loudest that we've got in here. And the reason that he's probably the loudest is that they're from really dense forests, so he needs to make himself known. So he's got to be really loud to uh, find a uh, mate and to find his predators or let the, his, um, the other jungle fowl know that his territory is where it is and not to come to his territory. Um, these guys are from Asia. Um, they are actually the ancestors for our domestic chickens. So this is where most all the chickens come from. Uh, Tiffany's asking what their lifespan is. Um, most um, jungle fowl are probably close to about, it can be up to about 10 years probably. Um, um, but in the wild, probably a little bit shorter just because they do have more predators and they're not they don't have a vet staff that can take care of them. They don't have constant food source. Um, Alias asks how long they sleep. Um, it really depends. I mean, they can probably sleep as long as we can, but because they've got to be their sleep is a little different. They've got to be on alert all the time to make sure that they aren't that their predators aren't going to get them. So they can, uh, their, their sleep's a lot lighter than our sleep is. So they can sleep a good deal, but they'll wake up throughout the sleep a lot more. Or if they hear a noise, they'll be able to wake up. And so it's a little bit different than how we are.
So we've got a couple different species in here. This is our red knob imperial pigeon. Um, and she's from um, some islands just north of Australia. And then we also have on the ground the crested wood partridges. Um, they're cute. They're little tiny guys. They um, got that great red <laughs> flock of feathers on his head that makes him look like he's got a little afro. Um, so the males are blue, the females are green. Um, the female is actually sitting on a nest, so you can't see her right now. Um, um, so uh, we're right now currently in the off exhibit bird breeding area at the Houston Zoo. Um, this is an area that most guests don't get to see. So we thought it'd be fun in preparation for migratory bird day to see some birds that you don't necessarily get to always see. This is a Fisher's turaco. Um, this is a different type of turaco than the white crest that we saw. This is a more green. Um, she's got red head feathers as opposed to the white head feathers. Um, but they're also from Africa. Um, she's very excited about what we're doing. <laughs> she's got those, um, or he, sorry, has those real striking white uh, marks around his eyes. Um, that may be for, to make the eyes look bigger, maybe for, uh, sun protection, um, but the turcos have just all a wide range of colorations. Um, on the ground we have um, the Edwards pheasant. Um, they're also a very endangered pheasant. They're um, found in Vietnam. Um, he's very striking, very blue with those red eye patches. Um, when he's doing his mating display, his eye patches can swell up a little bit, get bigger. Um, the females are typical pheasant, very brown, boring color. <laughs> um, Edward asked what the beaks are made of. Their beaks are made out of keratin, so it's really similar to what our fingernails are like. Uh, it's just a little bit thicker and a little bit harder. Um, they're, they've got toenails just like, it's very similar to ours too. Um, I don't know if you can see on the Edwards male, but he's got what we call spurs. Uh, lots of roosters and male pheasants have these spurs. They're also made of keratin. They're used for um, defending themselves and defending their hens or their chicks. Uh, Lizeth asked how much they weigh. Um, the Edwards pheasants probably weigh two to three pounds and the Turcos again probably one, about one pound. Mostly feathers, all their bones are hollow, so they're very lightweight. That's to help them get away and to fly. Oh. <laughs> it's another Fisher's Turco. Um, that's the female and the males on the top there. Um, they look exactly the same. Most all, most all Turcos do look exactly the same. There's a couple that have differences that you can tell, that tells which one's a boy and which one's the girl. Um, but the fishers are identical. And we tell them apart based on their banding. So you can, it's hard to, hard to see in this light, but she's got a purple plastic band and he's got a blue plastic band. And that's how we tell them apart. <laughs> we can open this door. All right, this is probably the finest cage in here. <laughs> this is a three species in here. We have the big girl here is our northern helmeted curacao. She's a little different than the bluebill curacao. Um, she's got the, you can see the knob on her head, um, which is called her helmet. Um, not sure what it's used for, probably to, from getting it through foliage or making, um, it might be resonate sound. Um, she's special because she's got, a, she's what we call a red phase. Most of the females are all black, but she's got that red, uh, scallopy look on her feathers, which is really pretty. Um, the little guys on the ground right now are um, blue crown laughing thrushes, and they're from China. Um, they're very social. You can see we've got four in here. They love their mealworms. 
um, but they're super cute, make really cute noises. Um, there's a whole group of birds called laughing thrushes, and that's because they make a sound that is very similar to a laugh. Um, probably won't hear that today, but you can see them foraging for their bugs and cleaning off their beaks, just being overall cute. Um, and then kind of in the back, it's kind of hard to see, we've got the Bruce's green pigeon. Um, and they're all over Africa. Um, they're really pretty. They've got real faint greens and purples and yellows. Um, we've just got the one male in here right now, but there are, um, there will hopefully be some more back on exhibit um, in the near future. <laughs> um, Tara asked, do birds play with each other? Um, yes, play is part of their, um, especially the social birds, like the laughing thrushes and the trumpeters. Um, they do play with each other. Um, I don't necessarily know if it's exactly the same as playing with us, like we play with toys or games and stuff like that, but um, they will chase each other around for fun. They'll um, um, preen each other, which is fun for them too. Um, and it's, the play helps them bond better as a social group. All right, well, I guess we're running out of time. Um, so, um, thank you guys for being here. Um, just a reminder that we do have a zoo fund at HoustonZoo.org to help us pay for taking care of all of our animals during this weird time. Um, and you can tune in Monday for another live feed at 11 o'clock. Bye guys. Have a good day.